Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're checking out the new Lenovo Chromebook 100S and this is not to be confused with the IdeaPad 100S uh, that is running Windows. This is a very different computer uh, running a very different operating system, the Chrome OS. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, I have a video linked above and down below that describes how it works. It is very different perhaps than you might have experienced with Windows in the past. So uh, you're very much tied into Google's ecosystem and watching that video uh, will give you a good idea as to what you should expect out of one of these things. Uh, pretty nice machine overall. This is an 11.6 inch display, $180 as you see it. Uh, the display is not IPS, but you have some really good viewing angles on it. It looks pretty nice. Lenovo has done a nice job uh, with their displays, even on their lower cost computers. It is not a touch screen, so you can touch the screen, but nothing will happen. Uh, you have a very nicely spaced keyboard here, which is following the Google Chrome design that they mandate, but uh, Lenovo has implemented it quite well. So nice uh, travel on the keys. It's a very typable keyboard. I am a touch typer, and I was typing very, very well on here as I was testing the computer out. A very nice trackpad also. A very nice surface area. It's got a click pad to it, so it works like uh, many of these other uh, click pads do. Uh, very comfortable to use as well. And they put a little touch of class on here. This is a metal uh, wrist rest here. So the rest of this is plastic, but this is a metal piece right here. It really feels uh, very nice and kind of classy for an uh, inexpensive computer to have something like that. This one, as configured for $180, has 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage. Chromebooks don't need all that much storage because they are very much tightly integrated with Google's cloud services. So whatever you put on here, whether it be a photo or a document or something like that, it usually finds its way back up to Google's cloud and is erased from the local storage. They do have more expensive versions of this that have more RAM. Uh, so you can go up to four gigabytes of RAM as well as a 32 gigabyte uh, internal drive if you choose to do that. But uh, typically in my experience, two gigabytes of RAM and uh, 16 gigs of storage is probably enough for most casual users. Although if you keep a lot of tabs open, uh, the extra two gigabytes of RAM going to four gigabytes uh, might be a better choice for you. Uh, there are a few slots to talk about. We've got HDMI here for plugging in external displays. You have a USB 3.0 port, that's a higher speed port on this side. You have a memory card slot which you can use to load photos on or maybe augment some of its internal storage, but those cards do stick out. So this might not be a good solution for walking around with storage typically, but you do have the option to plug that card in if you want, or of course use a memory stick if you want to do that. You can play movies and other things on these Chromebooks and you can check out my OS, Chrome OS video to learn more about how to do that. There's another USB port on this side. This is a slower USB 2.0 port uh, and you have a Kensington lock over here for locking it down onto a desk. It's pretty lightweight, about 2.6 pounds, uh, so not too heavy, although a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker uh, than its Windows counterpart. And we'll take a look now at its performance so you can see how this stacks up. All right, let's take a look at the New York Times and see how everything comes up today. There's a bunch of ads on the Times today that is really bogging down some of my lower end computers and uh, we'll see how it does with all those ads popping up here. But uh, the page does render pretty quickly. We are waiting now for all those ads to come in. Uh, if you saw my review of the Windows version of the 100S, you saw how uh, much it was bogging things down. This is sometimes, unfortunately, where ad blockers make a big difference because these ads are really uh, killing these low end computers. But everything's up on the screen here. We can go click on one of the articles here and see how fast everything uh, uh, renders up on page. So the nice thing is at least with the times that you're getting what you're looking for uh, before the ads pop in, but there will be some delay as things are loading in, but uh, a very good web browsing experience for the money. And uh, this is something that Chromebooks do very, very well. As you can see, we just get a lot of ads coming up on the page today. So let me get out of there real quick. Uh, one thing I did notice from a performance standpoint was on YouTube. Uh, when I played back some 1080p 60 video footage, uh, we're getting a lot of lag on here. And this is not the fault of the hardware. I really think this is an issue with Chrome because we we see the same behavior uh, on Windows running Chrome also. They're not taking advantage of the hardware acceleration that's built into these uh, Intel chips. So this might get improved in the future, but uh, this is a problem across all Chrome browsers, no matter which platform you're on, uh, where it really gets bogged down sometimes with this 1080p 60 footage. This computer is more than capable of playing that back. In fact, uh, the slower Windows version we just looked at was doing it just fine with the Edge browser. Now in fairness, regular YouTube videos will run just as well as uh, every other Chromebook does out here. So I don't mean to focus Focus just on Lenovo with this problem. This is across all uh, Chromebooks at the moment, at least the ones that I have tried in the under $200 price range. So this video here obviously is playing back uh, just fine. It is uh, a 1080p 30 frames per second video, which is what most of YouTube is. Uh, and for that matter, a lot of those 60 frames per second videos will not default to that faster speed that was slowing down on here. Most of them will play back uh, at a lower frame rate anyhow. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 8,700, a pretty respectable score actually for a sub $200 PC. 
Uh, that Celeron N2840 chip is running at a faster speed than the Atom chips are in some of the other sub $200 PCs that often show up on the Windows side. Uh, so it's able to do things faster, although those Atom chips can do more things at once. So it depends on what you're running, but uh, web browsing seems to do better uh, on the Celeron chips versus the Atom processors. The sound is okay out of it, nothing spectacular. There are two speakers that kind of point towards the bottom of your desk. So it, depending on what surface it's on, it may sound better or worse. Uh, it is a little bit on the tinny side. You're really not going to uh, really get a lot of audiophile experience out of this thing, but it's something you can plug in headphones to, of course, to get uh, better sounding speakers on there. Uh, they rate the battery life at around eight hours, and I think that's probably about what you're gonna see uh, in your normal everyday usage with this, because uh, you're doing typically web browsing. If you keep the display brightness down, I think you'll get that amount out of there based on the testing that I've done. So that is a Lenovo Chromebook 100S. It's really a nice entry by Lenovo into a very crowded marketplace for these sub $200 Chromebooks. I think what this one brings beyond uh, its competitors is not necessarily the performance. It performs about the same as those other Chromebooks do, uh, but it's the accoutrements here, the comfort level of a nice keyboard, uh, that nice metal uh, wrist rest here, as well as a nice trackpad. So they've done a nice job making it feel a little bit more comfortable perhaps than some other sub $200 Chromebooks. Uh, even though it'll perform about the same, it might feel nicer while you use it. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.